figure stars Owen Wilson and Ed Helms. Two brothers go on a road trip to find their dad after their mother admitted she lied to them about their father being dead. Who directed this movie? Who cares? I remember the Father Figures trailer was released last December. I thought it was fine. Father Figures was pushed back to now for whatever reason. It should have been released in January. Father Figures was okay. It's a disposable comedy. I'm sure lots of people disliked it. Owen Wilson plays Kyle, a successful businessman. He works for a barbecue sauce company. He doesn't have any kids. He has a hot girlfriend. Kyle is a laid-back spiritual guy. He believes the universe guides you. Owen's last movie, Wonder, came out last month. I enjoyed it. I said Owen is a random actor to me. I was being hasty. I like Owen. He isn't one of my favorite actors. Ed Helms plays Peter, a protologist. His private life isn't good because he's divorced, single, and his son hates him. Therefore, he's driven to find his dad. Peter is an angry, uptight guy. He's jealous of his brother. Owen and Ed have good chemistry. I initially thought they had okay chemistry. I'm not sure if chemistry has a middle ground. I quickly thought about Baywatch. Some people hated it. I thought it was okay. Dwayne Johnson and Zac Efron had good chemistry. This movie is serviceable. It's funny. I chuckled a lot. I laughed out loud a few times. Yeah, there's plenty of cursing, but there isn't much raunchy humor. These brothers go on a wild goose chase, searching for their dad. They meet a few guys their mother dated. This movie is lazy. The laziest scene was Kyle and a little boy peeing on each other. I'm not kidding. They're at a rest stop. The kid likes to pee on people for fun, so he starts peeing on Kyle. The kid's father tells him he has to pee on him so he can stop, so they have a little peeing war. That was cringeworthy. J.K. Simmons plays Roland, one of the father figures. It's a small role, but he was still good. Roland is a financial advisor. He's a tough guy. He owns a gun. He's paranoid of thieves breaking into his house because breaking and entering is common in his neighborhood. Speaking of J.K. Simmons, I haven't seen Whiplash yet. It came out in 2014. I think he won an Oscar. I'm not sure. After watching my La La Land review, my YouTube friend Sean Chandler jokingly said, you haven't seen Whiplash? You like angry, mean-spirited coaches. Sean's awesome. He has 7,000 subscribers. He's hardworking. He's consistent. He has charisma. Unlike me. I'm an awkward mess. I have no charisma, no personality. I have the fucking charisma of a rock. I suck at life. This movie is a little overlong. The first act was a little overlong. This movie has some weird editing. I mean, split screen editing. Apparently, the director thought it was cool. Is it a symptom of bad editing? I guess so. Father Figures gets a C. It's not bad. It's okay. It's cliche and lazy. Owen and Ed were good. They should work together again. It's not a bad movie to watch on cable or Netflix. The Greatest Showman stars Hugh Jackman and Zac Efron. It's based on a true story. It tells the story of P.T. Barnum, an ambitious guy who starts a popular circus. Michael Gracie directed this movie. He's a first-time director. Maybe lots of people were excited for this. I was only curious. I've seen the trailer twice. My memory quickly faded away. I'm not a huge fan of musicals. This was my second VIP experience. The first was Baby Driver. The Greatest Showman was okay. Hugh Jackman was the best actor. I'll miss him as Wolverine. P.T. Barnum is a smart, charismatic guy. He loves entertaining people, and he loves his wife and two daughters. Zac Efron was good. I already forgot his character's name. Sorry, guys. He is a theater actor who agrees to become P.T.'s assistant. He is likable but underdeveloped. He is not a snob like his parents. The sin was definitely good. Was anyone auto-tuned? I guess the kids were. It doesn't matter. I really watch musicals. Zac Efron was good as he should be. He made a few musicals before. He starred in Hairspray, which is 10 years old now. I skipped it. And he was in the high school musical series, which I skipped. Dancing was good. They were well choreographed. Nobody was lame or shaky. Hugh and Zac are good dancers. Their little dance was great. I'm sure these musical numbers took hours of rehearsal. Showman is visually stunning. It's beautiful. Say what you want about this movie. It's not ugly. This movie has real sets. Maybe there was one digital set. Yeah, the animals were digital. That's to be expected. Showman is a 20th Century Fox movie. 
I love the way it opens. It has two studio logos, the 80s logo and the modern logo. It starts off with a jazzy upbeat song to get you into the mood. The story wasn't bad, it was rushed. The prologue was PT's childhood. He had a rough childhood. It rushed through his childhood like it was born. We should have seen more of his childhood, um, you know, more explanation. I guess there were a few deleted scenes. The characters were mostly weak. Zad's character was likable but weak. Of course, we know a lot about P.T. Barnum. His wife has personality. This movie explores Barnum's career and personal life. It explores how his career affected his personal life. The Greatest Showman Gets to See. It's not bad. It's a serviceable charming musical. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of musicals. I really watch them. The actors were good. The dancing was good. It doesn't have much substance. Thanks, as always, for watching, guys. My Twitter link is down below. Let me know what you think of these movies. Did you like them or hate them? I'm sorry my reviews are lacking. I'm an awkward mess. I haven't forgotten about Bright. I'll watch it very soon. I'll talk to you later. Alrighty then.